Um, the next candidate is Rick Nancer from Eugene. Thanks, Ted. So yes, if the last name sounds familiar like it does to some folks over this way, it's because my dad was Roy Dancer, uh, OEA negotiator in the union for 25 years. And uh, yes, he was a Democrat, and I'm a Republican. And how he got a son who's a Republican, I think he was just lucky. Um, <laughs> it is genetic, because I have a twin sister who's also a Republican. I have two other sisters who are Democrats, a mom who's a Democrat, um, a son who's an independent. And we just come from a real diverse family. So to my dad, it was never important what letter was in front of your name. It was what you did with it and that you served your community. And that's what he cared about. So that's kind of how we got to this point. Um, I was a news anchor in Eugene, Oregon, Western in Oregon, actually south of Salem, all the way to the coast, over to Primeville and down past Roseburg. Uh, people know exactly who I am. I live in their living rooms, or I did, for an hour and a half every night on the news. I was a journalist uh, down in that area. Um, raised in Hillsboro, went to Hillsboro High School when there was one. Now there's, I don't know how many, because every time I come up, there's another name of a street that I remembered that now is a high school, but it was just one high school at the time. Um, did a lot of stories over the years on the legislature. Saw how it worked, how it doesn't work. Um, ended up doing a story two years ago on apathy, a half-hour special on voter apathy with former Secretary of State Phil Kiesling, and uh, never quite recovered from that. Went to my wife one day and said, you know what, I think I'm sick and tired of talking about what needs to be done, and I think it's time we just give up our job. Because you can't, you can't keep a job as a journalist in television and then run for office. Uh, they'd have to give Kate an hour and a half every night, um, Monday through Friday. And I don't think the two of us would even have something to talk about for that long ever, you know? So uh, you, you can't do it. So I had to quit my job. I have no career now. I'm retired at 49, and um, this is plan A, and there is no plan B. That's how it works. What do I want to do? What I want to do, first of all, is make it a nonpartisan position. Um, I think for too long the party has become too important in this office and it needs to be about people again, not about a party. If you go out and talk to Oregonians, and I've been from Joseph to Brookings to Burns next week and down um, up into Astoria, and everywhere I go I'm hearing people saying they're sick and tired of partisan politics. What they want is people not to fight for them but to just go do the job and get it done. And especially in this office, it's so much like what I do. Who's the watchdog? I see the Secretary of State's job as the watchdog for the people to protect them from the government, to go in and make sure your money's being spent wisely, make sure programs are performing the way they should be, to make sure that your vote is counted, that it counts, to make sure that the initiative process is, is going after the abusers, but not just in, in, in speech, but actually going after them and prosecuting not just the big names, but the little names of the people who are collecting signatures and doing this. And the state's not doing that right now. We need to go after these people to make an example and say, you don't get to mess with our system. The other thing I want to do is not make it so difficult for citizens to use the initiative process. Because I know we get frustrated and we get irritated by what happens, but we have to also remember there are a lot of people out there, that's their voice. When the legislature isn't listening, that's the voice of the people where they can go to make their opinions known, and they do. And we don't want to make it, we want to make sure we're protecting it, but we don't want to make it so difficult that the average citizen cannot use it. And Phil Kiesling, first person to use the new system on Measure 65, um, I read an op-ed piece and he said it was very cumbersome to use that process. So we got we to gotta make sure while we're protecting people that we're also not making it so they can't use this to, to use their voice. Um, my experience is not a politician. I have, uh, no, I'm not a career politician. I've experienced politics from the eyes of the media and now I'm on the other side of the camera and it's a lot different over here. But in terms of experience, I know how to go after a story. I know when something doesn't look right. I know how to research and let the facts lead me to a solution by listening to people and researching, not by a partisan agenda. I think we must take the par politics out of this job. And, you, and, and uh, I know when Kate and I have talked, we, we're together a lot these days. It's not for to tell people less information about who I am. I'm a Republican and I'm proud of that. That's fine. But when I go to work, just like I did as a journalist, that part of my life stays in the car and I go in and do my job for every single person. And yes, you have to have somebody in this position who's going to do it if, they're going to, if it's going to be a nonpartisan office. But the reason you put nonpartisan over that office is not so much to tell the voter that you're going to be fair. 
but it's to tell yourself every day when you walk into that office and you see that you are a nonpartisan, that you don't get to bring your Republicanness or your Democraticness or your Green Partiness or whatever it is that you have that follows your, or precedes your name. You get to go in and work for all people in Oregon. Oh, I got a green card. Kate and I had this contest to see who can not get the green card. Um, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a good process. The other thing I'm supporting is opening the primary. I think that or it's time for Oregon to open the primary system. I don't like the fact that we are charging taxpayers to pay for an election that they can't fully participate in. 25% of our voters are paying for a process that they cannot participate in. And yes, I know they can change their label and they can become one of us, a Republican or a Democrat, to do that, but that's not fair. That's not the way Oregonians should act. That's not the way we should work. Who owns the process? The people should own the process. I want to open it so everybody can get into the top rung and they'll have just as much shot. You'll, you could end up sometimes with four Democrats, three Democrats to split the vote. The minor parties will have just as much chance getting into that general. Yes, they're not going to be able to just put their name on there, but they'll have the same shot at the primary as everybody else will. So those are my three big things. Um, but we'll take more of your questions because I don't want to get the ending card because it's a, just a goal of mine. So I'll, I'll call that it and then you guys can ask us our questions. Thank you.